Please stand if you're able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins. No, no, no. Things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and the whole of our spirit so that we may live and serve you. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Let us pray. O oh God, you have prepared for those who love you joys beyond understanding. Pour into our hearts such love for you that loving you above all things, we may obtain your promises, which exceed all we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please. A reading from Acts. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles, for they heard from speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, Can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited him to stay 
for several days. The word of the Lord. We are now singing in tone Psalm 98. reading from 1 John. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whatever is born of God conquers the world. And this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. Not with the water only, but with the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one that testifies, for the Spirit is the truth. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel comes to us today from John, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. As the Father has loved me, so I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please 
Be seated. And I invite our young friends forward for the children's sermon. Should we sit down here this time? Good morning. It's good to see you, Alice. Good to see you, Abby. I, uh, I don't know if you've noticed, but I've been gone. Yeah, yeah. And I was in what's called the Holy Land. Do you know what that means? Yeah, what does that mean? It's like Jerusalem. Yeah, it's like Jerusalem and the places where Jesus lived. Okay, the places that we read about in the Bible. Um, I went over there and I got to, uh, got to see some of the things that Jesus would have seen and do some of the things that Jesus would have done and eat some of the food that Jesus might have eaten. Um, it was a very interesting time. Another thing that I got to see had to do with baptism. And I don't know if you heard it, but in our first lesson, Peter says, Peter commands that the people be baptized, right? Now, I know that you were probably baptized in something like this. Does that look familiar? Yeah. How's the, how's the water there? Did you want to go take a look? Go take a look and see what the water is like in that baptism font. Can you describe it for me? What? Clear. clear. Yeah, clear. Yeah. You, you want to see some other baptism water? Well, come on over. This is some other baptism water. Does that look clear? No. No, those are my feet. Those are my mom's. That's my mom's foot, and that's my sister's foot. So just so you know whose feet are in the water there. Yeah, so we're sitting on the edge of the Jordan River. And um, that is where baptism often took place. And this is where we think that Jesus was baptized. It was kind of in a muddy little section like that. Yeah. And um, let's see. Let's... And this was up where, you know, you saw the feet thing, the feet? Yeah, this was up above that on the steps. And that's another very clear water kind of place. They filtered the water from the Jordan River. And that's one of the things that I did. I stepped down into that water on wooden steps. That's not me, though. I don't know if you can tell. Yeah. But I didn't take a picture of me doing that. Yeah. Let's see. What else did I have here? Well, I didn't... Did I show you this already? What's that look like? It's feet, yeah. And what's on it? Sand. Sand, yeah. It's actually mud. The mud got all dried on my toes there, and then I wiped it off into this baggie. And you know where that mud is from? Look at that. It looks like dirt now. It's from the Jordan River, where Jesus was baptized. I think it is very cool that I got to go and see that. And then we heard about, can anyone withhold the waters of baptism? In our lesson this morning, we talk about baptism, and sometimes we just think of the clear water there. We don't think of all the people that I saw that went into that kind of dirty looking water, and they went in over their heads to remember their baptisms. Can you imagine being baptized in a river? Has anybody here been baptized in a river? There we go. I knew there were two of you. What was it like to be baptized in a river? It was in January. Um, I hope it was south. Uh, no. No? Uh, no. Um, so Tom got baptized in a river in January. How do you think that was? 
Cold? Was it cold, Tom? Just a little bit. Yeah. And um, was it clean water or was it kind of messy looking water? It was kind of messy looking. Yeah? And did you go in over your head? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it wouldn't be baptism in a river if you didn't, right? That's right. That's right. Yep. So, and you remember this pretty well. You were older, weren't you? Yeah, you weren't an infant. What about you, John? What do you remember? Hog Creek. Do you know where Hog Creek is? It's just that way from us. Yeah. On the east side of Lima. On the east side of Lima. Yeah. What was it? Pretty clear water. Wasn't bad. Wasn't bad. All right. Oh, you got, you got to be baptized in the same river that he liked to swim in. How about that? Pretty cool. What makes the baptism water important? That it's clear, or that it's dirty, or that it's a river, or it's a baptismal font? What makes it important? That there's water. That there's water, absolutely. What else do you think makes it important? Does anybody out there know what makes the baptism water important? The words. The, the words and God. Yes. Because it's not, it's not how messy the water is. It's not whether or not the water is in the river or in the baptism font. It is that God, that God is there and acting. So come on up here. One of the things I got to do in that dirty water of the Jordan is I got to put my fingers and my feet in. You know that. But we got to put our fingers in and we got to remember our baptism. And then I also had someone put her fingers in, another pastor, and she looked in my eyes, and I'm going to look in your eyes and do what she did, okay? Abby, child of God, you have been marked with the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. Alice, you have been sealed with the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. And any time you want to do that, to remember who you belong to and your baptism, you can do that. Would you like to do that to somebody else today? Just make the sign of the cross on their forehead with your wet finger. Let's do it. Let's do it. If you'd like to remember your baptism today with our help, raise your hand. There we go. You've got a mom and a grandma to practice on there. Anybody else? There we go. Cindy, remember your baptism. I know. <laughs> Anybody else? Bob, remember your baptism. Amen. Anybody else? Let's pray. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus thank, you thank you for showing us, for showing us your, love your love through baptism. Through baptism. Amen. Amen. All right. Better grab something up here. Thank you for coming up. Have a good week. Thank you, Abby. Let's pray. Holy God, thank you for this day, and thank you for bringing us here to this house of worship, that we may with one heart, one mind, one voice, praise you and remember that we belong to you. And now may the meditations of our hearts and the words of my mouth be acceptable to you. Amen. 
So last week you heard a little bit about baptism, right? You heard the story about Philip and the eunuch and heard the question, what is to prevent me from being baptized? And then this week we hear Peter challenging the people he's with, right? Saying, can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people? Now, you and I, we might hear that more as a rhetorical question because, you know, we're kind of familiar with this, right? It doesn't sound like Peter is looking around and saying, can anyone withhold the waters for baptism from these people? And he, he had a firmness and he had a challenge in his voice. And we get a clue about that because it's right there in the scripture. In verse 45, it says, The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles. Does that sound like a clue to how challenging this was? Or shall I break it down for you a little bit? Shall I remind you that the circumcised believers, that's a clue to tell you that these were the people who were with Peter, who were of the covenant. Abraham and Sarah are my forebearers. I am a daughter of Abraham and Sarah. I am a son of Abraham and Sarah. That puts you in a little bit different category, right? Um, it puts you as recipient of the covenant and a chosen one. And so uh, the, as the recipient of that covenant, you know, their children would become a nation and they would be blessed. And the sign of their identity of, as God's children chosen children was circumcision. So these were no ordinary believers. These were the children of Abraham and Sarah, the ones who for generations had waited for the Messiah to come. And now this generation of believers who were with Peter, they were the ones to tell the good news of Jesus Christ, the Messiah. They these believers, they were the ones that came with Peter because Peter was another great preacher and one of the original 12 disciples. Peter had some status, right, in the early Christian church. Also, also, to offer the water of baptism to the non-chosen people, to the ones not the children of Abraham and Sarah, those were the Gentiles, and to offer the unclean, the ritually unclean, something like this would have caused a gasp throughout the group. A gasp. Because these were the ones that had come with Peter and were witnessing what he was doing. The ones who came with Peter probably knew Peter pretty well. They'd listened to him preach, they'd shared meals, they'd had conversations. Peter had probably been a guest in their homes at one time or another, and they knew Peter. They knew what he was thinking about Jesus and what Jesus meant to the world. They trusted him to interpret that for them. They trusted Peter, Peter to interpret what life meant now that Jesus had come, now that the Messiah had come, now that the kingdom of God has drawn near. They knew Peter's ideas. They knew Peter's faith. They knew Peter was a man of faith who obeyed all the rules and rituals. All the ritual cleanliness and uncleanliness, Peter obeyed those rules. And so for Peter to say, what is to prevent us from baptizing the Gentiles, the ritually unclean, that would have caused a gasp throughout this group of believers. 
But what they didn't know about Peter was that Peter had just come through a conversion experience. Immediately before this story of the Gentiles being baptized, a man named Cornelius was praying. He had a vision and clearly saw an angel of the God. This angel told Cornelius to send for Peter to come for a visit. Cornelius was a Roman soldier. Cornelius was not one of the chosen children of Abraham and Sarah. Cornelius was a Gentile, which also meant Cornelius was ritually unclean. But Cornelius was also a believer. And so he sends for Peter because while in prayer, the angel of God told Cornelius to send for Peter. Okay? So the men he sends to Peter arrive just after Peter has had a vision of his own. Peter was praying and the vision from God told him that the rules about clean and unclean food were tossed out. God has made everything ritually clean. Not a coincidence that Peter has this vision just before the Gentiles come to him. Peter knows this is not a coincidence. So Peter goes to visit Cornelius and ends up preaching to a bunch of traditionally ritually unclean Gentiles. And while Peter was preaching, the Holy Spirit falls on the people, even on the Gentiles, it says in our lesson. So no wonder it also says that the ones with Peter were astounded. They let out a gasp. <gasps> what did Peter just say? Baptized Gentiles? Peter had had a conversion and now welcomed Gentiles? That was a shock to them. And then the gift of the Holy Spirit was poured out even on the Gentiles. So it was not a rhetorical question. It was a challenge. Can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people? Peter was challenging them to open their minds and open up their hearts to all people. Peter was challenging them to open their eyes and see how God was acting in the world. Peter was challenging them to let go of the old rules and follow where the Holy Spirit was leading, trusting that the good news of Jesus Christ was changing everything, that the good news of Jesus Christ was changing the world. So is it possible that Peter is challenging us today also? Is it possible that Peter is still challenging believers, believers like you and I? Yes, this question, this question started bubbling up in me as I read this scripture. Because I was challenged, and I am still sorting out the challenge that I experienced at the baptismal site of Jesus, the challenge that I experienced at the River Jordan. I always thought of myself as pretty open-minded, and so it was a shock to me that when I was at Bethany Beyond the Jordan, the newest Lutheran church in Jordan, it was a challenge to me that I met this intern and his wife, Rolf and Kirsten, and they told about their ministry there at Bethany Beyond the Jordan how their main job was to build up the spiritual life, to build up the space, to build up the new retreat center 
and to welcome guests and give tours. It was important for a pastor to be there, said Rolf, because people would come and desire to be baptized. People would come and desire to be re-baptized. Now here's where my challenge is. Here's where my challenge is. Do you just show up at the baptismal font and say, baptize me? No. Do you get re-baptized? No. That's not in my thought process. But can anyone withhold the waters for baptizing these people? It was a challenge to me to think about that on the bank of the Jordan River and to wonder, to wonder at my own assumptions and to wonder about what God might be actively doing today. Is it possible that Peter is still challenging believers? Oh, I think so. Is it possible that Peter is still challenging believers to open up our minds and our hearts to all people? Is it possible that Peter is still challenging believers to open our eyes and to see God acting in the world? Is it possible that Peter is still challenging believers to let go of old rules and follow where the Holy Spirit is leading now? Is it possible that Peter is still challenging believers to trust that the good news of Jesus Christ is still changing everything? My prayer for you this week is that you be open to the ways God is still active in this world, the way the Holy Spirit is leading, and the ways that our risen Jesus is changing everything. What does it mean for Zion Lutheran Church to walk into the next 175 years? How are we being challenged by the words of Peter today. Many blessings on your discernment, and thanks be to God. Amen.
please stand as we confess our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty. Rejoicing in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we pray for the witness of the church, the wholeness of creation, and all who are in need. Holy God, your voice calls us to worship. Where discord bellows within the church, unite us in harmony. Where we lack direction, guide us in singing your song with our unique voices. Hear us, O God. Creative Lord, your melodies formed the earth and all that is in it. Receive the roar of the sea and the rhythmic clap of the rivers. Rejoice as the hills ring out in praise. Hear us, O God. Holy One, you hear all our moans and groans. Where lament and the blues resound, send us to listen. Send us to comfort. Send us to build relationships rooted in your justice and peace. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Serenade the estranged and all who suffer alone. Accompany high-functioning addicts and the frightened who have no one to turn to. Give rest to overworked caregivers and people living with schizophrenia. Today we pray especially for all those who are sick in mind, body, or spirit, those we have named on our prayer list, those we name silently or aloud. Hear us, O God. Eternal song, you call us to share your gifts for your glory. We thank you and praise you for our musicians and vocalists, choir directors and hymn writers. Bless all who lead and all who sing and worship. Hear us, O oh God. Your goodness echoes through all time with the songs of the saints. Thank you for all the disciples who have mentored us through their gift of music. Keep your song within us this day and always. Hear us, O oh God. Lord, we uh, pray also for those who grieve. May their song of sorrow come to your ear, and may you reassure them with resurrection promise. We think especially of the families of Gary Howe, Robert Ward, and Lloyd Paul. Hear us, O oh God. We entrust all our prayers to you, gracious God. Receive them by the power of the Holy Spirit and the love of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please exchange that peace with one another.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with blessings as you have raised us to new life in Christ. Give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And we pray together as our Lord and Savior taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated until the usher comes for you.
please stand. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of life to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to your Son's resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. In peace to love and serve the Lord. Be to God. Please be seated for the special congregational meeting. <laughs> 